Hi, I'm Ken Shank, and I'm the author of Jesus is Lord, An Introduction to the New Testament. In this video, I want to give you just a little taste of the introductory chapters, chapters 1 through 5 in this book. By the way, there is an, a shorter version of this called God's Plan Fulfilled that is more streamlined and doesn't have some of the deeper chapters. It gives more of the, it's a fuller survey, as it were. The introductory chapters are chapter 1, Why Read the New Testament, chapter 2, How to Read the Bible as a Christian, chapter 3, An Overview of the New Testament, chapter 4, Who Chose These Books, and chapter 5, Why Are There So Many Different Bibles? Chapter 1, Why Read the New Testament, is very short. Basically, if you're not a Christian, uh, the New Testament has had an immense effect on Western culture and on America, and therefore, you want to know why you think some of the things you do without knowing it. You don't want to be a slave to the forces on you. You want to be aware of them. Reading the New Testament is essential for any Westerner to know the, the influences that have made us what we are to a, a great extent. It's a short chapter. How to read the Bible as a Christian then poses this question. A non-Christian can read it as history. A non-Christian can read it as literature. But how do you read it if you're a Christian? Well, of course, if you read it as a Christian, you believe that God exists. You believe that Jesus came to earth and was the Son of God and things like that. Those sorts of presuppositions are true. But there are different ways to read the Bible even then as a Christian. Historically, of course, the Bible gives witness, we believe as Christians, to the most important events of all of history. When Jesus came to earth and solved the human problem, um, we know he lives, and because he lives, we can face tomorrow. The Bible as Christian has that hope, and the Bible historically gives us a witness to the, the, the most important words, the, the last word, as it were, that God gave us, and it's now playing itself out. Of course, we can read the Bible personally as well, where it changes us. We wake up one morning, we read scripture, and we have hope, and we have a word. Maybe even we have direction on what we should do that day. We also read the Bible as communities of faith. That's where we get together, and we pray, and we read the Bible, and we, as Philippians 2 says, we work, our, work out our salvation with fear and trembling, a kind of community reading of scripture. Chapter 3 then gets down to business with uh, the New Testament survey part. What are the different parts of the New Testament? I have a slide on this in a second. Then chapter 4 deals with the question of how these books came together. We may not think about it, but these books weren't written one morning when God got a group together and said, okay, I'm going to inspire the New Testament together. And they all went to their desks, got their individual pens, and they wrote their particular parts. You know, oh, that's very interesting. That's not how it happened. God worked through their human, personality, human personalities, through their human uh, styles, their human um, penmanship, uh, and they wrote these as individual letters at, over about a 50-year period. And of course, then, how did, these, how did these go from being individual writings here, there, and all over the Mediterranean world? How did they go from that to being one book? They didn't know which books were the right books to be in the New Testament automatically just from the beginning. And so chapter 4 talks about that process. Finally, in these introductory chapters, why are there so many different Bibles? There's the King James Version, the New King James Version, the New International Version, the New American Standard Version, uh, the English Standard Version, the Common English Bible, I mean, and on and on and on. Why are there so many Bibles? We'll talk about that in this chapter. Okay, I want to briefly expand on uh, two of these chapters. First of all, to give you a sense of the sections of the New Testament. This is very important in a New Testament survey. One of the very first things that you should know about the New Testament is what's in it. And so basically we can divide up the parts of the New Testament to the Gospels. The Gospels, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and these introduce us to Jesus. They're biographical and historical. And so the Gospels are the first four books. The fifth book, the book of Acts, is a bridge, as it were, between Jesus and Paul. Uh, Acts is actually the second volume of Luke and gives us the story of the early church from Jesus' ascension to heaven uh, to the end uh, in about 62 when the Apostle Paul is sitting uh, in Rome waiting to appear before Nero. Then we have Paul's letters. Um, Paul is one of the most important uh, writers of the New Testament, maybe even the most important. He certainly has had an incredible impact upon us, uh, especially since the Protestant Reformation in the 500s. Paul's letters. What Christians believe today may have as much to do with what Paul wrote as it has to do with any of the other books in the entire Bible. Then after Paul's letters, there are some what are called general letters uh, and, a, and a sermon called Hebrews. These general letters don't uh, typically have just one audience, like Paul's letters were often written to one church in one location. 
The general letters were written to lots of churches in lots of locations. Finally, the last book of the New Testament is called the Book of Revelation, or you may have heard it called the Apocalypse. This is, of course, uh, the part of the Bible that talks about the, the way things are going to end at the very end. Okay, why are there so many different Bible versions? This is the fifth chapter. Uh, there are basically two reasons that you'll find out in this chapter. One is the fact that we do not have the original copies of any of the books of the New Testament. Now, don't don't get concerned. We have lots of copies. But we don't have the originals. We only have copies and copies and copies of these books that were written 2,000 years ago. And they weren't written in English, of course. These books were written in Greek, the New Testament books, that is. And so some manuscripts, some handwritten copies of these books say one thing, and other handwritten copies of these books say other things. Again, don't worry. We have specialists who figured this all out. However, the fact is that there are two basic traditions on what the original Bible said. Basically, it amounts to the underlying words behind the King James and New King James Version and the way uh, all the other versions have concluded uh, that the words read originally. If you don't understand what I'm saying, read that chapter. There is a second reason, though. Uh, so one reason why versions differ is because they may be translating something different for, to begin with. But the second reason why versions differ is because there are different philosophies on how to go from the original to English. So the, the first one has to do with what words you're translating. The second one has to do with what your philosophy of how to translate them is. So some versions are more, are more wooden and try to stick more closely to the sentence structure. Other versions try to represent the thoughts. And of course, uh, a good translation really goes more thought for thought than word for word. You can't go word from, for word from Greek to English and come up with something that makes sense. You have to put it into the English way of doing things rather than the Greek way uh, of doing things. But this is a little bit, a little taste of, of why there are so many different versions. Well, that's a brief introduction uh, to the first five chapters of Jesus' Lord. I hope you find it enlightening and exciting. Thank you.